you know, thank you, uh, Didier and uh, Dean, for giving us this great opportunity. Um, so we, uh, in the recent days, we see a lot of buzz around uh, cloud native transformation and no code platforms. So today's talk is going to be um, on no code transformation on uh, HP's Esmeral container platform. Right. So before we jump into the session, I would like to give a quick introduction about myself. I'm Vinotini Raju. I'm the founder and CEO at GoPaddle, which is a no code platform for cloud native workloads. I have around 20 plus years of experience in the enterprise systems. I have played around with distributed systems and composite architectures. And one of the key motivation for today's talk is around these distributed systems, of course. And I have Ashwin also joining uh, the session. So he is the community uh, uh, development lead at HP. I mean, with uh, GoPaddle and uh, he actively contributes to other open source projects like Acreno, LF Edge and our, um, you know, our open source projects like Configurator. So this is what I'm planning on covering. So the first one is, um, you know, I'll be talking about the different stages of uh, cloud native transformation and what it actually means. And what are the key considerations that we need to make at every stage of the transformation? Uh, so some of the challenges that comes up with uh, while we make these key considerations and how, you know, or what GoPaddle is and how GoPaddle is going to uh, solve those challenges. And uh, finally, you know, I'll be talking about um, the uh, HP Esmeral and the GoPaddle solution together. How do we offer a no code acceleration um, for cloud native transformation? And finally, we'll have a short demo on how this whole solution works. So as you can see here, uh, we have uh, three stages of transformation. It generally, you know, it starts with how we um, you know, transform our environment. So be it from a bare metal server to a VM, uh, to a more uh, standard um, Kubernetes environments. So how do we provision those environments and how do we automate the entire provisioning process? That also involves your compute and your storage. Um, so in our case, like we will take a look at um, you know, HP Esmeral and the MAPR as the uh, underlying standard infrastructure on which we'll start doing the transformation. The second phase of uh, the uh, transformation involves the application itself, uh, which starts with you know, transforming uh, the architecture from a monolithic uh, architecture to a microservice-based architecture. Um, in some of the cases, you know, monoliths are optimal, but in most of the cases, you know, um, you know, microservices um, are really beneficial and they take the complete uh, um, you know, benefit of running them on uh, Kubernetes environments. So today's uh, uh, goal here uh, is to talk about uh, the microservices and not more from uh, you know, converting the architectures. Uh, so we'll just see uh, what are the uh, considerations that we have to just look at um, taking a microservice and then uh, transforming it into a Kubernetes-based deployment. The last one, of course, is once we have the environment and the application, now how do we uh, start uh, looking at the day two maintenance? Uh, how do we put an automation around that um, like a CI CD or monitoring and logging uh, so that, you know, the day two maintenance becomes much more simpler and easier. So the first consideration we have to keep in mind is that, um, you know, the whole transformation um, is a shared responsibility across multiple stakeholders. Um, so even from, you know, right from provisioning the environments, you know, the DevOps or the ops teams are involved. And when we start building the application, developers are involved. And when we have to stitch multiple services together and build a, a composite architecture and a complete deployment architecture, uh, then you know, developers, solution architects, and sometimes even the develop, DevOps teams are involved. And finally, when we do a deployment and uh, we start, just give me a second, I think my screen is not fully visible. Um, yeah, the final um, option is uh, when you have to start maintaining these applications, the DevOps teams or the SRE teams are involved. Now, in the whole process, there is an automation involved, and uh, we also have to, you know, look at the governance aspect of how, um, you know, uh, we maintain the traceability and the logs of who made what change at what point in time, and how do we give access controls across these different st stakeholders. Now let's look at the first one, which is um, you know building your application. 
Now this is where we start taking a microservice and then start um, you know, transforming that into a Kubernetes-based uh, deployment. Now, as a first step, we always need to consider uh, how it is going to be maintained in a long term, right? It's not just about uh, you know, converting that microservice uh, to a deployment, but we should also keep the maintenance in mind right from day one. Say, for example, if we have you know, configs and environment variables, then as a best practice, we may have to keep all of these uh, in the form of config maps or, or secrets um, so that you know, we don't bind these uh, in information along with our uh, Docker images. So it's better to keep certain configurations outside the images so that we can redeploy the same image across different environments. And we should consider the security aspects right from day one. So how, what happens when we have to run these containers um, as a, a non-root user? Uh, because you know, things may change the moment we introduce these uh, security contexts in a deployment. Say if we want to run as a, a specific user, some of the volume mounts, mounts may stop working, right? So we need to consider these security aspects right from day one. Now it's also important to set these health checks because if we don't have a health check, if we don't have a liveness or a readiness probe, then uh, you know the, ser the services that are deployed on Kubernetes may start, you know, in uh, maybe in running state, but they may really not be serving the request. So it's it's critical to set these uh, health check. Um, as soon as we start uh, deploying these microservices. Similarly, you know, the logging frameworks, so we may have to have some specific uh, logging frameworks if we want to use FluentD for log aggregation and others. So then we need to uh, look at sidecars and how do we expose those logs to these sidecars is another thing to consider. Similarly for multi-stage builds. So if we are reusing the same base image um, on top of which we are going to deploy our application, uh, then we need it becomes uh, you know easier when we reuse certain uh, base images. We can in fact set some cache policies and things like that so that you know uh, you know deploying uh, these uh, containers take lesser time than usual. And uh, we need to consider these are long running processes and if there are other dependencies, right? So for example, if I have a, a database service and I have another service that is making use of those uh, databases, so. We need to consider that if certain connectivity aspects fail, then we need to kind of restart, pull for changes and restart our services. So these are long running processes and we should look at the long-term maintenance of these services. And we have to make the best use of the image tag. So at any point in time, we should be able to figure out, you know, uh, which image contains uh, the corresponding commits and uh, other details, right? So we need to look at all of these, even at the time of building the applications. Now, at the stage of deployment, now we have crossed the space of writing our Docker files and building the Docker images. Now we need to look at deploying this into uh, Kubernetes. So now there are so many other moving parts on top of the Docker image that we just built, right? So we need to look at config maps, how, how to create secrets, how to create deployment services and different types of network access, how to set access controls like roles and role bindings, how do I maintain a, 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 you know, a domain secret? How do I set the ingress? And even for deployments, there are so many other strategies to consider, right? Like for example, how do I allocate? What is the right capacity to set for these uh, containers or the deployments? And how do I deploy? How do I scale? And how do I update these services? So there are so many other moving parts, right? The last consideration um, on top of what we have done so far is to make sure that whatever we are building across the three stages saw that we saw, right? So from the infrastructure to deployment to even the day to operation, we should look at templatizing everything so that we can reuse it. So the moment we templatize and we ensure that these are portable, uh, that there are no environment, especially during the deployments, if we make sure these templates are portable across different deploy, I mean, different environments, then we can reuse the same uh, templates for deploying across different environments. And this becomes a contract between the uh, stakeholders, right? So for example, if we are making use of Helm charts, we can just share this Helm chart uh, with the team members and they can straight away use the Helm chart to deploy it across uh, you know, different build stage or production environments. So it's, it's equally important to have uh, templates um, which are portable and um, uh, you know, this is a key consideration to make.
The second one is to have a version control mechanism where everything that changes within the system has to be version controlled. And I know, and I know like DevOps is one of the uh, familiar or a common practice where you know, all the changes that goes even into your YAML files or your uh, deployment specification get committed and they take different branches for different environments. Uh, so some mechanism to even version control all of these, um, you know, the artifacts is important. But the moment it gets into Kubernetes, I think Kubernetes itself will give you the option of uh, version controlling all those uh, rollouts and things like that. But even before, um, getting to Kubernetes, um, there must be a mechanism to version control all the artifacts because at any point we should know who made what changes and why that change has got into the system. The last one is to centralize uh, because now that we are looking at you know, microservices and there can be hundreds of microservices and there can be different types of environment, shared environments across the teams. Now we are looking at a multitude of environments and deployments. So we need to have a centralized way of managing these to avoid any sprawls. Uh, it could be cluster sprawl or it could be microservice sprawl. For example, there could be teams uh, that make use of Redis or Postgres or the ELK or EFK stack. Now this is a, uh, you know, it's a common uh, set of uh, services that are used across different types of deployments. If we have a central way of uh, managing them in the form of catalogs, then different teams can actually make use of that and then they can uh, reuse and deploy it. Otherwise, uh, uh, the out, uh, otherwise, what would happen is that different teams will have the same set of resources and the license management and maintenance becomes even more cumbersome. Now, having considered all these, now coming to the final outcome is, this is how it looks like where you have, um, you know, templates uh, like Helm charts with different services um, uh, having dependencies across other services and each of these services uh, themselves are version controlled. And one service may have one specific version of a specific service can have a dependency on a different version of a different service and the whole template can be version controlled. Now, what might happen is that, you know, if something breaks in this, it's extremely difficult to manage the dependencies across these services and how to, you know, roll back, tra trace the issues, how to debug, all those becomes really uh, difficult. Now, uh, one another thing to consider is the config maps. Uh, this, this in itself is a huge topic, uh, but I would like to highlight that here because um, the way co config maps are handled within Kubernetes is uh, slightly different compared to other resources. It is a shared resource and different deployments can share the same config map and uh, it is not version controlled. So if a deployment kind of, uh, you know, uh, does a rolling update or a rollback, it has its own uh, life cycle, whereas config maps remain static. So at any point in time, we go change the config maps and if something fails, there is no way of, uh, you know, uh, coming back to a, a predetermined or a, a preset uh, state. You know, this is a key problem and uh, there has been use cases where, um, you know, um, companies have faced some downtimes because of this config map uh, um, uh, being shared across uh, deployments and it's not version control. So we have some solutions around that as well. Now let's talk about GoPaddle, uh, having seen all these challenges and the considerations. So GoPaddle is a no code platform that helps to build, deploy and maintain cloud native applications. Um, and it kind of abstracts all the com uh, complexities that comes um, uh, through this transformation process. Um, so it does all the artifact generation on the fly. And uh, the moment you key in the code, it gives you all these artifacts. And it also helps to provision different Kubernetes environments. Um, and it, it could be uh, uh, an on-premise environment like HP Esmeral platform, or it could be uh, your um, um, other multi-cloud platforms like EKS, AKS, and GKE. And you get continuous integration, logging, monitoring, and other uh, out-of-the-box tool chains as well. And uh, it also gives guardrails for building containers with all the security aspects right from day one. So the whole process happens in a no-code fashion. So whatever used to take some days to months to transform, now takes a couple of hours to um, do the transformation. And it is built on top of another open source project, which is again uh, maintained by GoPaddle. It's called Configurator, which kind of keeps the config maps in sync with the deployments by version controlling the config maps. So at any point in time, if anything goes wrong, it's, um, it's possible to revert back to a specific um, state um, amongst the deployment as well as the config maps. 
So this gives a more predictable uh, deployments and rollbacks. So why we cons why uh, go paddle? How it helps, right? So it gives all the guardrails as I mentioned earlier. Like it builds um, an efficient cloud native app right from day one, and we have around thirty plus integrations with other third party tools. Uh, so you get some of the uh, out of the box capabilities like the storage management, logging, and uh, network access management, ingress, and um, in other uh, rolling updates and rollbacks. And we also have a marketplace where we have around thirty plus apps. Um, uh, templates which can be readily used. We support any type of Linux workloads and we give an automated governance and uh, version controlling and dependency management across different resources. So overall, this is a much more cost effective solution and um, it gives a very simple way for developers to start transforming right from code to deployment. So how does this work? So the first uh, process starts with uh, provisioning a Kubernetes environment. Um, so for Go Paddle, everything is built around Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is a first class citizen for Go Paddle. So it starts with provisioning the Kubernetes environments, and then we do what is called as an intelligent scaffolding. So this is something uh, done through um, our command line utility or through our uh, dashboard, where we start uh, looking at the source code and then start transforming the application. Right? It automatically converts uh, to um, a container by generating the Docker files and also generates all the artifacts, um, say all the Kubernetes YAML files, and you can also generate uh, Helm charts. And when we do that, you also get all these CI CD um, capabilities along with monitoring and alerting. So if you see the whole process, um, most of these uh, transformation um, considerations are automated. So let's talk about this uh, scaffolding process. So here is the workflow of how this scaffolding works. Uh, so now this is done, uh, this actually depicts how our command line utility works. Uh, so gpctl is the command line utility and developers start cloning the source code. And from there, uh, they initiate a download and initialize this um, gpctl command line utility. Um, once we do that, um, we need to key in three inputs. One is a build script, start script, and a health check. So build script says how to build your application, just like how you build it on your local desktop and then how to start an application and how, what is the health check? So how do we know when the service is up and running? So all of these are plain simple scripts, shell scripts that tells us how to build, run and uh, check for the uh, status of this application, just like how you do it on your local desktop. Now from here, you, uh, you know, GoPaddle takes over, it analyzes the project, it uh, suggests some of the best fit base images for building this container, and it also starts building a container profile. Now, a container profile includes security configurations, other network dependency and capacity requirements. And then once we have the container profile, we create what is called as a container metadata. That's nothing but a container profile, right? And with that, you know, we create a Docker image and this makes use of the Kubernetes environment for building the Docker image. So developers get to choose which Kubernetes environment to use for the build process. Once the build is completed, you push to the Docker registry, and then um, you can generate what is a, a deployment template, which is nothing but uh, a user, I mean, a GUI-friendly uh, way of seeing your health charts. So it generates a template, which, in, which is then, then is used for deploying your application. And finally, you get a URL of the deployed application. Now you can choose whether you want to deploy or you want to generate a health chart, but uh, I'm gonna show uh, next how this whole process works um, you know, right from source code uh, to getting a URL, right? We also have the capability to do the app migration. So suppose we have uh, an application running in one of the Kubernetes uh, environments, be it say any of any, any uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, standard Kubernetes environments, we can take those uh, workloads and then we can uh, move those workloads uh, to another uh, Kubernetes environment. Um, and on, in the process, we uh, generate what is called our deployment templates which are totally cloud agnostic. So we can take these templates and then we can redeploy this across any um, Kubernetes environments. So how is our uh, no code transformation on HP Esmeral look like, right? So we have this uh, HP uh, Esmeral platform and the data fabric, which act as the infrastructure um, layer. And on top of it, we can run GoPaddle, um, which does all these multi-cloud provisioning and storage management. 
and all these scaffolding and building and all the uh, security elements are uh, provided as a part of GoPaddle. And we also have all these DevOps tools like CI, CD, monitoring and logging. Now combined with HPE platform and with GoPaddle, we have a complete end-to-end -end solution of uh, you know, transforming this whole uh, cloud native environment as well as the workloads and the DevOps capabilities all through a single solution. Uh, this is how, uh, how our demo setup looks like. Uh, so we have two bashing hosts. One is a CentOS bashing host and a, Linux, uh, and a Windows bashing host. And uh, we, are, we are going to access our HP um, Esmeral environment using these bashing hosts. And um, you know, uh, we have uh, brought up a, a container, an Ubuntu-based container in one of these worker nodes within the um, uh, Esmeral platform from where we are going to initiate the uh, command line utility. And this is because of the other access restrictions we have. So we had to bring it up uh, in this format, but uh, if we have access to these environments directly, I mean, we can uh, install uh, GPCPL straight on a Ubuntu machine or a CentOS machine, and we can initialize um, or do the scaffolding um, using that. Um, but we have uh, uh, brought up a container, Ubuntu container to do this for the time being. And from, uh, uh, and from within one of these worker nodes, we have installed um, Jenkins, GitLab, as well as uh, GoPaddle. And from GoPaddle, we are going to um, start doing the transformation. Um, in fact, like we can uh, provision AWS, Google, or Azure, but today we are not going to do that. Um, you're just uh, going to stick to the Esmeral platform and to show how uh, MapArt can be used for this purpose. So let me switch to my um, uh, Ubuntu container. So this is where I have cloned a project. Um, and this is a contentful uh, Node.js application. So what, what we have here uh, is that this is a clone project and we have a couple of scripts as I mentioned earlier. Uh, one is a build script. Let, let, let's take a look at the build script here. So this is how a build script looks like. So this is going to install um, npm install, which is uh, the standard way of building uh, a node application. And our health check would look like this. So we are going to, um, you know, uh, connect to uh, this uh, 3000 port to see whether um, you know, the service is up and running. And then the run script, start script would look like this, which is to uh, uh, you know, start the uh, service. Now, what we are going to do is uh, to do the uh, GPCTL init process here. I have already logged into um, our um, HP uh, environment. Okay, so uh, we have um, the init process, which takes the start script as the input, build script, as well as the health check. So the moment we initialize this, it has detected the uh, project and uh, the project type is a JavaScript project. And we're going to, um, it, it, it then gives us, sorry, it then gives us the best, best fit base image for this uh, particular image, uh, for this application. So I'm gonna choose um, one of the GoPaddle provided um, base image. And now um, it has um, uh, discovered what is there in the base image. So it has a couple of ENBs and uh, entry points. Um, and while it is building the container profile, it is going to look for any conflicts between this base image and the application itself. And uh, it will give the option of choosing between these environment variables uh, uh, based on uh, developer's choice again. So I'm going to go with the second one, which is already there in the base image. And now uh, developers can choose if they have multiple clusters, they can choose which uh, cluster to use. Now this cluster will be used for both building as well as for deploying the application initially. Um, but later on, uh, they can make use of the templates that are created in GoPaddle uh, for deploying it across different environments. So this is the initial scaffolding process. So we'll go with this option.
And now we uh, get to choose the uh, Docker Hub uh, or the registry where the image has to be pushed or pulled up. Now, this is the registry that will be used for uh, pushing the finally you know, built Docker image. So I'm going ahead with the first option. And then uh, they're presented with a capacity. Now, this is the capacity that will be used for uh, provisioning a build environment within uh, the HP Esmeral platform. So inside this is where the actual um, container build uh, is going to get triggered. So I'm going to use uh, the third one, which is a slightly a larger uh, policy because um, it will save us some time. So now this is going to trigger a container build, right? So this, um, this will create the container profile and then it's going to trigger a container build. Now, this is going to take a couple of minutes. So let me switch back and um, Ashwin will um, show us the uh, dashboard and uh, the different capabilities that are uh, available uh, in GoBattle. So we'll come back to this once we are done with the uh, dashboard uh, demo, because this is going to take a, a, at least around uh, five to 10 minutes, right? I'll stop sharing the screen. Over to you, Ashwin. Thanks, Vinodhini. Thanks for the product overview. So let me share my screen. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let the team go through uh, the GoPaddle dashboard. But before I do that, let me quickly switch to the Esmeral platform. So we have, as uh, Vinotini mentioned, we've already installed GitLab and GoPaddle onto this cluster. And we have around 11 hosts in this, inside which uh, some of it has data fabrics enabled. So we use uh, those hosts for our Rust table sets. So this is a uh, uh, this is a small platform, and let me switch to the Copilot platform. Yeah. So I've already logged into one of our Copilot accounts. So as soon as you log in, what you get is an overview of this project, like the number of uh, builds that has happened with this project the volumes, you know, like it basically gives an idea of what has been happening uh, for this project, a complete governance of this project. Projects are nothing but individual workspaces within this account. So you can create multiple workspaces and then switch between them from the dropdown here. And then if you come to this cog icon here, you have the option to register your cloud accounts. You have the option to bring in your uh, image repository or one of the cloud provided ones, or you can bring in the, bring in the on-premise ones as well. And then if you come to the code option, you can uh, register your code basis here. And then we also have the uh, ability, you know, the GoPaddle lets you create roles and then assign uh, users, I mean, uh, create users and then assign roles to that so that you can have a granular control over the account. So for example, there's an uh, role Ashwin, user Ashwin, and then it has uh, assigned a role with all the uh, permissions, like it can have whatever access uh, it needs within this GoPaddle account. So that's the, uh, uh, you know, the Teams option. And then if you come to the Alerts option, you can set alert tools for various resources within this GoPaddle account. For example, if I go to the Applications and then click on Add, I can select uh, at what event exactly I want to get notified. Uh, for example, if you come to the Select Events, you can uh, choose either one of these options when the, server, when the, the application is having a rolling update or a rollback. We can set the alert rules for this uh, applications. Similarly, you can set for the other resources as well. For example, if you go to the clusters, you can add rule for when it is having the, a scale down, scale up, all that. You can set the alert rules here. And then the uh, medium through which you want to get notified, you can choose them through the notification channels. You can either choose the web hoops or Amazon SNS or pager duty. So this is the, uh, you know, like these are the one-time setups that you need to do before you onboard your services to go paddle. Now, if you come to the left side panel, if you click on the template section, you can, uh, it basically gives some meta, uh, you know, information about uh, the resources. For example, if you click on the containers, let's go to the content pool, which we know we just triggered. You can see that it has all the basic metadata of the container, like the network information, health check, the cloud paths, and all the ENVs. The key resource to note here is, as Nothin mentioned, are the deployment templates. So it is basically, uh, you know, you group all the uh, resources that you see on the left side panel and you create a deployment template. And when you 
uh, launch it in your cluster it becomes your application so it is cloud agnostic and basically you build it once and deploy it anywhere let me click on one of the deployment templates you basically can view all the uh, resources that are there in the uh, deployment template and then if you come to the artifacts these have the uh, you know the information to uh, uh, generate the uh, or, or to basically build your code uh, so if you come to the uh, distributions let's go to one of the distributions here if you want to enable you know a continuous integration for the service you can do so by clicking on the toggle here so that's the key resource note in this section and then if you come to the infrastructure so you basically can maintain uh, uh clusters from multiple providers from one point stand so let me click on the hp as cluster you can view the cluster activities from this tab here and then uh, we can click on you know the applications to list all the applications that are running on top of this cluster the builds that has happened with this cluster and then these are the add-ons that GoPaddle uh, you know includes while provisioning the cluster like grafana prometheus uh, to know more about the cluster metrics you can click on the grafana and then import a dashboard so i've already have imported dashboard so it gives you you know the cluster metrics memory usage cpu usage and file system and then if you come if you want to know about the node you can click on a particular node this again gives you the node metrics and then if you click on the logs you can have a complete trace down of the you know, uh, node events so this is uh, the thing with the cluster here and then if you come to the uh, volume section again you can have a complete information about each and every pvs within this account For example let me click on this so you can uh, get all the basic information about the pv and then if you come to the uh, policies you basically can set a lot of uh, uh, you know you can set the allocation policies or you can define your network policy deployment strategy all through the policy section here now let me go to the application page so oh, okay Yeah, let me go to the application page. So let me click on the application to know more about it. Again, you have a complete uh, governance over this application. You can view what has happened at what, uh, you know, what is the current uh, activity that has been happening with this application. To know more about each of the services, you can click on the services and then click on the, again, you have the, uh, you know, service uh, metrics here. To know about the containers, you can click on replicas, go to the containers, and then you have the container logs here. I think my network is slow, so let me log into the, you can also directly log into the uh, container using the terminal tab. So I'm inside the container now. And then if you come back, you can have, uh, you know, the information about the volume that the service is uh, consuming. Yeah, so basically we have our metrics and, you know, a complete track of all the resources within GoPaddle. And then let me go to the build that uh, we know the trigger. So this is the build that you know when you have triggered you can get the exact commit from which this build got triggered and what is going to be the final image that is uh, being built out of this code all that information you can get and also you can list the build activities and in case if you want to debug you can also go to the build logs and view the entire build logs yeah i think this is one overall view of the uh, copadel platform uh, Vinod, you want to continue with the inner process? 
Yeah, sure, Ashwin. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, let me uh, share my screen. Okay, so um, as um, Ashwin pointed out, I mean, this is the uh, uh, container uh, that is already, you know, built and it has created a template for uh, this contentful application. Now we have an option to um, expose this port externally. Uh, so this has been discovered by uh, GoPaddle during the container profiling. So we are going to expose this port. So let me choose yes. And uh, this is going to uh, ask me you know, the corresponding node port. For the time being, when we do the um, init process, we have only support for the node port based access. But if you are deploying through GoPaddle uh, dashboard, we have uh, multiple options. Like if you want to use ingress or uh, with uh, with or uh, without load balancer and all kinds of uh, possibilities are automated uh, from the uh, GUI dashboard, but uh, through GPCTL uh, only the node port is supported for the time being, right? So I'm going to choose one of the uh, ports. Um, uh, so I hope I can use something like this. So this is going to uh, deploy the application and um, uh, finally we would get a URL through which we can access this application, right? So this deployment is again going to take a couple of uh, minutes, right? So by this, you know, uh, it, the whole transformation took us a couple of minutes um, rather than, uh, you know, developers having to hand, uh, write all these um, YAML files and uh, Helm charts themselves. Now we have uh, the complete automation through a single command line utility and through dashboard so i hope uh, uh, you know we would like to uh, leave around another couple of minutes for any q a so if there is anything um, you know we are open for any questions around this and i think there was one question in the uh, chat room about uh, go paddles integration uh, with hp ismeral uh, now whatever you uh, we demoed today uh, go paddle itself is installed on hp ismeral platform um, it's running as a software on top of Esmeral container platform as Kubernetes deployments. And uh, uh, the integration with this contentful uh, application that you saw here. Um, so this, uh, this is coming from a GitLab again, which is installed on Esmeral platform, right? So uh, that is uh, the current setup, uh, but uh, we have two layers of integration. Uh, one is um, how do we make use of Esmeral platform for building and deploying the applications? Um, so that is one level of integration. And the second one is uh, we also make use of map R for all the stateful uh, workloads. Let me see if I can um, show you the map R integration. So let me just log into my environment. So this is, I'm, I'm, uh, I have to connect through a Bashian host, so please bear with me for this um, multiple logins. So uh, one way of uh, deploying GoPaddle is uh, we can deploy it on the Esmeral platform. and requirements uh, from there. Or uh, another way of uh, integration is that uh, if uh, GoPaddle is installed on a different environment, but within the same firewall, I mean, we can register the Esmeral platform as an external uh, cluster uh, through a Bashian host. That is also feasible, right? Uh, so just like how we manage other cloud platforms, we still will be able to manage it uh, uh, from a single uh, dashboard. Uh, looks like I'm having some trouble accessing it from here. So Ashwin is the port is uh, 32,000. Uh, what is the access port? Maybe I think you can show it by yourself. I mean, it's better you show the map out from um, volumes. Would you like to share, Rashmi?
Any questions or, or until Ashwin shares his screen, um, anything that I could answer? There was a question uh, in the chat about um, how it integrates with Esmeralda. I think you, you covered uh, that uh, in two different ways. It, it, is there a way to, to show any part of that integration or is this too complicated for today? Um, actually, I, I think uh, Ashwin covered that uh, when he showed the cluster from uh, uh, details and then he showed uh, uh, the different uh, capabilities of how uh, we deploy add-ons on um, Esmeral. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so maybe Ashwin, you can show the cluster and the uh, MAPR integration once again. Yeah, sure. So you see the cluster here uh, that we have registered is uh, Esmeral uh, cluster. And uh, all these uh, options of managing the add-ons and the nodes and builds are all happening on the Esmeral platform. So we have the add-ons and the nodes also are, are discovered. If you click on nodes, you will see the 11 nodes that are available on, under the Esmeral platform. If you go to each one of these uh, nodes, uh, you can also get to see uh, the different labels and uh, the utilization and other uh, attributes. Um, if you scroll down further, uh, you will see the, um, you know, the labels uh, that are available on these uh, different nodes. Um, you also get to see the Docker images uh, that are running on these, uh, that are, uh, you know, available on these nodes. So you get to see the capacity consumption across these Docker images. And you also get to see the logs for uh, these nodes. So this is the integration that we have uh, at a, um, you know, from a, a viewing the a, a cluster perspective, but whatever uh, contentful application that we uh, built and deployed, all the builds happened on this uh, cluster only. So if you go to uh, clusters build section, you will see contentful got built uh, in this particular um, cluster. So if you go to builds under the last one, you would uh, see that the contentful got built in this particular. Um, okay, so there is a. Can you can you scroll go to the applications? Yeah, so you, you see the contentful is deployed on uh, the Esmeral platform. Uh, so this is one, uh, you know, we make use of Esmeral platform for building and for deploying applications. Now going, going to the volumes section, can we check the volumes please? So here we have a list of all the volumes that are managed uh, 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 on Esmeral platform and what are provisioned at the time of deployments. So if you click on one of these MAPAR uh, volumes, you get to see the different um, attributes for these volumes. And um, you, know, you can see that this is a MAPAR volume and uh, the type of file system that is used uh, and the provisioner that is used for provisioning these volumes. So all these stateful applications that we have deployed, uh, they are making use of the MAPAR uh, volumes. There's actually another uh, another question on chat about static config maps. Could you answer that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so the challenge with the uh, config maps is that you have uh, a different life cycle for deployments and a different life cycle for um, the uh, config maps. And uh, we have come up with an open source solution called Configurator, um, which takes care of uh, versioning the config maps. So maybe I can share the screen here and I'll show you what that uh, so open source. We have integration with uh, uh, GoPaddle as well. So we can go edit the content maps directly from the uh, uh, GoPaddle uh, UI and uh, that will automatically you know, um, make use of the configurator for versioning the config maps. Now this is the open source solution. Uh, and uh, this takes care of version controlling. This runs as a, um, you know, a custom resource and a, a controller uh, within uh, the Kubernetes clusters. So as soon as you provision a cluster or you uh, register a cluster with GoPaddle, it automatically installs this configurator uh, controller 
and uh, from then on you know all the concrete maps get automatically version controlled right so this um, uh, this has its own config map uh, custom resources and uh, custom controllers which kind of takes care of uh, syncing your deployments and your um, you know config maps i can actually share a video which uh, we recently did um, on the whole uh, functionality of this configurator so you can uh, you know see how it can help you in your uh, deployments but any config map edits that you do through uh, go paddle it will automatically get version controlled. Thanks, Vinutini. Any other questions? We've got a few, few minutes left. Yeah, I got a question real quick. Uh, so, um, Vinuti, how do you compare yourself to some of the other paths offering this in the marketplace? Um, obviously, for Esmero, uh, it's great to have um, GoPad on since we're pretty short on development tools. But let's say if customers are evaluating past platform, right, and have to compare GoPad with some of the other implementations out there, um, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I know like uh, there are a couple of uh, past options that are available in the market. So the way we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the um, you know past platforms is that we are a completely a no code platform. So during the entire transformation, developers don't have to write any Docker files or YAML files. Uh, so everything, uh, you know, the developers uh, have to just focus on their code um, and their, uh, you know, business logic while GoPaddle does the complete transformation, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, that is, that's one key differentiating factor. Now, the second one is obviously, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, much more cost effective compared to other solutions. Uh, our pricing is, uh, uh, you know, way more flexible, and uh, uh, you know we have different options. Like either you know you use a SaaS version um, where you kind of customers can pay for how much they use, or they can have an on-premise installation uh, on uh, uh, you know on an uh, on their on-premise clusters. In either ways, you know we still will be able to integrate with the uh, Esmeral platform. So as I said earlier, like if you, if at all customers are using a SaaS version of GoParable they can register an Esmeral uh, platform through a Bastion host and they can centrally manage it. And if they are installing it as an on-premise version, I mean, whatever demo we showed now is actually running GoPaddle on top of Esmeral platform, right? So based on, you know, the business needs and uh, uh, their, uh, you know, the budgeting requirements they have, they can uh, choose either of these options and, uh, you know, it's fairly, you know, flexible that way. And uh, one more, uh, additional thing which I would like to share uh, is that if, if at all customers are exploring the SaaS edition, uh, we have uh, three sub products which are again, um, you know, a mix and match kind of an option. So we have three sub products for a SaaS version, which is Deck Propeller and Gear. Deck is for build um, to, for building the containers. Propeller is for deploying and maintaining the applications. Gear is for multi-cloud solution. Now, each one of this um, is a sub-product and it's, it's a, it can be used with other solutions. Say, for example, if um, customers are using GitHub Actions and they don't want to use a uh, deck for building their application, they can still use a uh, propeller and gear for it. And it's the same case with uh, the other two as well. So it's fairly flexible uh, on how they want to uh, mix and match with other third-party uh, solutions they have. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we have uh, GoPaddle on-premise, all of these three solutions uh, get bundled as one single license, as one single SKU, and uh, it can be uh, deployed on the Esmeralda platform. Cool. Somebody was asking about Cloud Foundry. Have you have a chance to look at it and compare it against GoPaddle? Uh, yes, so Cloud Foundry and uh, has some something called as the build packs. Uh, these build packs, again, give you um, uh, sort of a scaffolding for uh, the applications. Uh, but with GoPaddle, if you see, like we do some sort of an intelligent scaffolding. So uh, we pretty much, we, we don't have this concept of build pack, but we do have these base images uh, that are uh, specific for specific types of applications, be it say Node.js or Java or, um, you know, .NET Core, right? Um, but, uh, you know, you know, we have something similar, but we do, one step further, like we do the scaffolding based on the, um, the developer's application and we create the container profile on the fly. Thank you. Thank you, Vinotini and uh, Ashwind uh, very much.
I have uh, started uh, a poll. I forgot to start the poll earlier, but hopefully the remaining people can answer the question. It's really quick. Thanks for uh, sharing this information with us. Um, we will share the slides with the people and the recording once we go through the process for uh, publishing our videos. Uh, thanks again, everyone. And I'll talk to you in an upcoming Dev Talk. Thank you. All right. Good Dev Talk. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.